About a year ago, I made a video about how to make JavaFX applications using IntelliJ IDEA and Gradle with the JavaFX plugin. That video has been pretty popular, and it's a technique I use all the time in my own work and with my students. However, several people have asked, well, how do we package the applications? And up until recently, I didn't have a real good answer to that, and honestly, I don't think there was a real good answer to that. Recently, though, I've looked more into it, and I have a solution that works pretty well for me, and I'd like to share it with you today. So let's start by looking at this application that was created using the technique I showed before. This is a simple JavaFX application, and in my uh, build.gradle file, I've brought in the application plugin and the JavaFX plugin. I've specified the main class name as a configuration for the application plugin, and I've told the JavaFX plugin that I need the JavaFX controls module. So that should allow us then to, uh, via Gradle, run the application. And sure enough, there it is. Okay, so let's say we want to package this and give it to people to install and run on their own computers. Well, there's a couple of steps involved. The first thing I'm going to do is actually change the version of Gradle, because this technique that I'm going to show you doesn't work on the latest release of Gradle. So I'm going to go over to my uh, Gradle folder here and choose Gradle Wrapper Properties and change this down to 6.5. Now again, you know, these things might change depending on when you watch the video, but as of this recording, this is a, a required downgrade. So change that, refresh Gradle, that's good. Now, my next step is going to be to bring in a new plugin. So let's get back over here. And uh, the plugin I want is called the Badass J-Link plugin. And it looks like this. That's the most recent version as of this recording. Uh, we can go ahead and reload that. Okay, so another piece we're going to need here is to actually define our application as a module and not just as a old-fashioned Java application. Now, you may notice that I used to use edu.bsu.cs222 as a lot of my package names, uh, but it turns out modules aren't supposed to have numbers at the end of their package identifiers, and so I'm trying to break that old habit and get into a new one and just call it edu.bsu.cs. Now, if I right-click over here and say new, one of the options that come up here is a module info.java. That's exactly what I want, so I'll select that. I'll go ahead and add that to git because if I always have version control under me. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Well, we need to tell it what the name of our module is, and the conventional name is just whatever package you are making your application in. So here I'm going to change this to edu.bsu.cs, edu and uh, we have to tell it what dependencies this particular module has. Now, my main application, remember, is using controls from JavaFX, so we're going to go over here and say that we uh, require the JavaFX.controls module. And we have to say what module we are exporting from here. And so we can say this exports edu.bsu.cs. And that should be all we need here. Let's get back to the build.gradle file. Now, in order for this to package correctly, we have to tell the application plugin what module we're using. So we do that like this. main module is a property, so we have to call set on it, and that'll be just edu.bsu.cs again. Alright, we're almost there. Now, we can notice that this jlink plugin gives us extra options here under build. The one I care about right here is jpackage. If I double click on this, it's going to run that jpackage target, and that's actually going to fail here because I'm running on Ubuntu Linux, which doesn't support RPM. So I can add some extra configuration here, and uh, it looks like this. This tells my system to use uh, deb as the installer type. So let's go ahead and just run that one more time. Notice we get some warnings here about using incubator modules. That's because some of these features we're using are subject to change with the next stable release of Java, but they do work for now. Okay, that finished. Let's see what it actually did. I'm going to go into this build folder. We can see there's a folder here called jpackage. And, uh, for convenience, I'm going to open that up in uh, Dolphin, which is my file explorer. So let's look in here, and we can see that there is a deb file. This is an installer for Linux. And in here, this is uh, actually what it packaged up. If I go into the bin folder, and this is uh, executable, I can just double click it, say run it, and yeah, that's my application running outside of the IDE. So that works fine if you're on Linux. Uh, if you're on Windows, what you're going to want to do is 
uh, well, not tell it to build a deb file because it won't know how to do that. Uh, you're also going to need to grab the Wix toolset. So you go over to wixtoolset.org and install that on your operating system, and then on Windows you should be fine. Uh, by the way, Wix here is a free and open source, and so you know there's no trouble with, with using this. If you're on a Mac, you can just pray to the intercession of St. Jobs, and I'm sure some magic will happen and you'll be fine. So that's how I've been able to take my JavaFX applications and create installers and native executables for them. I hope you found that useful. Happy programming.